What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Anthony and this is Watch With Me. Today we're going to be going over what I think is the best brand to get into for vintage watches. Uh, completely undervalued as of 2019 right now and uh, kind of the hidden gems that I personally have in my collection and why I think it's a uh, it's a smart choice to maybe invest right now, and uh, I'll throw out some key pieces that I think you can get into for under five thousand, under three thousand, and under under even two thousand. Before we get into that, two things: one, wristwatch check. Today I am wearing my Rolex Daytona. This is a, a sixteen five two eight. This is solid gold, uh, Zenith movement, uh, S serial number dates back to 93-94. The other thing I'd like to talk about is I noticed that we're at uh, around 70 subscribers. It really means so much to me. Thank you all for subbing. Uh, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun and uh, I will be doing a giveaway at 100 subscribers. Uh, it's going to be some cool watch swag. All you have to do is follow me on Instagram, sub to this, and uh, drop a comment down below. Uh, but we'll go over in the next couple weeks what I'll be giving away and uh, what you exactly have to do to win the prize. Alright, so what brand is uh, being undervalued right now and a great sleeper brand to get into uh, right now in 2019? That brand is Breitling. Now, uh, vintage Breitling couldn't be more different than what today's Breitling really is. But um, that being said, I mean, Breitling has an amazing history. They came out in 1884. Leon Breitling started the company, uh, eventually passed it on throughout the family, uh, sold it to the Schneider family, and then in recent years, they sold off to CBC Capital. Claims to fame, Breitling had uh, they invented the second push piece in 1934, I believe. Uh, before then, it was all uh, kind of a mono pusher or through the chronograph. And on top of that, they had the first chronograph ever worn in space. I know the Speedmaster gets kind of that uh, claim to fame being the, the moon watch, but the Cosmonaut uh, did go up into space six months before the Speedmaster did. And, uh, uh, you know, it's just a brand that's extremely old. And uh, let's face it, they make probably one of the best chronograph movements uh, in the market today, the B01, uh, 347 parts, 46 jewels or so. It's a very robust movement, but very reliable. And I think uh, that's why Tudor uses it now in their Black Bay line. But um, enough of the modern day stuff, let's get into some of the sleeper picks that I think you can pick up at a great value. So, the first watch I would recommend at an entry level price would be the Breitling Top Time. Now, the Top Time is a pretty broad range and they do range uh, all the way up to six, seven, eight thousand dollars for a Top Time. But the one I'm talking about uh, is actually like the piece that I own that I'll throw a photo up right there. It's uh, this particular Breitling Top Time uh, can be had at between a thousand and two thousand uh, dollars. I think it has to do with it being slightly smaller. This one ranges at 34 millimeters, but it has a Venus 188 movement, so a very reliable movement that can be serviced by any watchmaker, so you don't have to worry about getting a vintage piece that you have to go to a specialist to get it running again. So uh, this particular piece, I think, wears uh, pretty well for its uh, time period. I love the rectangle pushers on it. Uh, two register chronograph, obviously no date. I just think it's an absolutely beautiful piece and this is something you could have for around $1,500. I mean, this watch, in my opinion, is so much nicer than half the shit that's out there. God, if I have to watch another YouTube video on friggin' Vincero or Movement watches and you see these guys out there uh, talking about you know, how they have 15, 20 of them, 15 or 20, it's more expensive than my Breitling Top Time, and this is a this is a piece of a real history and real style to it. So that would be my first choice into really getting into the vintage scene and getting something pretty cool. Um, second, if you can have a slightly higher budget, uh, the Navitimer. I mean, if you look at the Navitimer, I think it has to be one of the most uh, iconic chronographs uh, in the world. Uh, I mean, you put it right next to the Rolex Daytona and the Omega Speedmaster, it's just as iconic in my opinion. Uh, it's not everyone's style, not everyone's taste, but I personally love the slide rule. Uh, here's a photo of mine. This is uh, an 806. Uh, it has the AOPA logo, which is the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association. Uh, now, the Navitimers, they range. 
If you get um, a Valjoux uh, 72 movement, which is the same movement used in, uh, you know, Paul Newman Daytonas, yes, the, those navvies go from, you know, eight thousand to fifteen thousand dollars, and if you do the the cosmonaut with the Valjoux movement, you're going to be spending twenty something thousand. Now, mine uh, doesn't have that, but that doesn't make it a bad watch. It's still a piece from the 60s, and uh, it has a, a very reliable movement. Um, I believe it's also a Venus movement, and uh, these can be had between $3,000 and, and, and $4,000 in good shape, too. Uh, mine has the beads of rice bezel, which I personally love. Uh, so, uh, again, another amazing watch with so much history, such an iconic uh, design, and can be had for under $4,000. I don't think you can beat that. Um, and then, it, as you go into some of the more sought-after pieces, like the, the real Super Oceans uh, from, the, from the 60s and 70s, I mean, those are very expensive. But those are just, just two models I think you can't go wrong with, with Breitling. Uh, there's many more out there. I recommend, you know, do your research. Uh, go on Instagram. I believe uh, the gentleman's name is Watch Fred. Uh, he probably has the most amazing vintage Breitling collection I've ever seen. Uh, but uh, uh, there's also a website, the Breitling Museum. You can kind of uh, look at all the watches at all the years they were made. But in my opinion, if you're really looking to get into vintage watches and you don't want to spend the premium with the Rolexes and the Tudors and the Universal Genevs and things like that, look at Breitling. Amazing history, beautiful designs, and at a great price point. So those are my uh, those are my two picks to help you guys out with that I personally own as well. So you know I'm not just giving you advice. I listen to my own advice and I have them and I love them. But uh, that's all I got. Do me a favor, leave a comment down below. Uh, what are some brands that are, are a tremendous value right now in the vintage scene? What uh, what do you own? Uh, what do you think about the, the watches I chose? Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. And until next time, take it easy, guys.